Today I'm answering a subscriber's question by reviewing the best routing direction for both inside and outside edges. For those of you that are new to the channel, if you've missed the first two basic router videos, I'll leave a link below so you can check those out. As a review, routers spin their bits clockwise. Therefore, the best direction to feed the router is against the bits rotation or counterclockwise around the workpiece. This type of cut is what's called a push cut and its counterclockwise feed direction is by far the safest. Contrary to that, if you feed the router in the same direction as the bit's rotation, which is known as a climb cut, the router is less stable and of course not as safe. Now this counterclockwise feed direction only works when you're routing outside edges. No matter how I spin this board or where I start from, the direction always stays the same. But it gets a bit confusing when you go from routing just outside edges to routing inside edges as well. If you look at this frame, you can see that it has both inside and outside edges. You can correctly assume that the outside edges would indeed be routed in a counterclockwise direction. But if you were to feed the router in the same direction on the inside edge, you would mistakenly be making a climb cut without even knowing it. To better see this, let's look at the bit rotation again. With the bit rotating clockwise and against the outside edge, the bit naturally wants to pull the router to the left or clockwise. Therefore, to make a push cut, we already established that the feed direction for an outside edge needs to be counterclockwise. But as soon as we jump over to the inside edge, that same clockwise rotation now wants to pull the bit to the right or counterclockwise. So that tells us that when routing inside edges, the direction of feed has to change from counterclockwise to a clockwise direction to make the same push cut. Ultimately, taking this extra time to think about the feed direction will definitely help you maintain better control over your router. At this point, you might be wondering what would happen if I made a climb cut? What would I experience? And before I answer that, let's take a few more minutes to talk about each cut and why some people actually prefer the climb cut. Oftentimes, those who prefer climb cuts are experienced woodworkers, guys and gals who really know their routers, plus they understand fully when and where to use that type of cut. And for the most part, they decide to make this cut simply because that feed direction produces a cleaner cut, and here's why. If we look back at our frame, you can see that the grain on this board is running in this direction. If we introduce a spinning bit in a counterclockwise feed direction, the bit has a potential to lift the grain or pull it out, creating tear out or worse, chipping. But if we feed in the direction of a climb cut, the bit now actually compresses the wood fibers inward, creating a better chance for a cleaner cut. And now you know why some people prefer the climb cut over the push cut. Again, there are so many variables to consider before deciding to make a climb cut, like the type of wood, the grain direction, the type of bit, and the milling operation itself. And that's something we need to talk about in future videos. Okay, so back to the question. If you were to make a climb cut, what might you experience? You would most likely experience the router actually pulling its way through the wood this time. Unlike when you made the push cut, where you actually had to push it a bit. In some cases, the router could pull itself out of your hands, especially if you weren't prepared to make a climb cut. You might also experience a wavy or jumpy cut. Oftentimes, the router climbs, creating these small waves in the profile of the cut. However, these wavy cuts can easily be cleaned up by simply making a shallow push cut as a final pass. And lastly, you might experience a different sound coming from the router itself, as it is now cutting differently through the grain. Bottom line, push cuts are the safest way to feed the router, and for the most part, they make some really clean cuts. So hopefully now that we've walked through that, you're able to better understand the feeding direction for both inside and outside edges. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out and supporting Training Hands Academy. If you have any questions, leave them below, and if you'd like me to make you a video on any topic about carpentry, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.